Hi, good evening. How are you, Jose? Hi, Miss. I am taking my coffee. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that coffee gives you energy at night? Yes, it provides me the energy that I need. <laughs> That's really cool. Did you know that some people drink coffee and it doesn't give them energy? It does the opposite effect. It gives them, it makes them sleepy. <laughs> yeah. I, maybe they they drink, how do you say, ralito. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is, um, there is an illness, you know, have you ever heard about ADD? Like attention, attention deficit, hyperactivity, right? ADHD. So usually kids have it, but also some adult people, they have it. They suffer from ADHD, like they have attention deficiency and that. So <laughs> that, that type of people, when they drink coffee, it gives them the opportunity. Instead of give, giving them energy, it makes them, it calms them down. <laughs> okay. Are you, this is scientifically proven <laughs> because mm -hmm. you know them. Have you heard that some psychiatrists they can prescribe medicine to people that suffer from ADHD, right? And then the medicine that they give them is similar to drinking caffeine. They are stimulants, and mm -hmm. to produce the, the opposite effect. <laughs> I was mm. reading about it. Really interesting. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try. Yeah, but lucky you, it doesn't give you that effect. It makes you active. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> nice. Hi, Mauricio. How are you? Hi, Tisha. How was your weekend? Uh, Did you get some rest? Uh, I'm fine. But yeah, today I work and tonight. Oh, yes. At what time do you go out? Yeah. At what time do you leave work? Okay. <laughs> no, I was asking you, Mauricio, at what time do you leave your work? Um, what, uh, uh, no, I understand the chair. Uh, what time do you finish your work? Yes. Uh, 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 at nine, nine and a half. Oh, at 9.30. Okay. So, yeah, you're going to be there a while. Then. Hi, Carlita. How are you? Hi, good evening. How was Hi. your weekend? Did you Tired. <laughs> <laughs> the weekend. What did you do during the weekend to be tired, Carla? Clean the the house. <laughs> oh yeah, then yes, you are tired. <laughs> um, uh, wash washing. Wash the house. Clothes. Oh, the clothes. <laughs> the laundry. Doing the laundry. Doing the laundry. <laughs> oh no adult life <laughs> you know on Saturday I was supposed to come back to my house we went out for a uh, uh, dinner with some family members and then we were supposed to go back home but then I texted another friend that was uh it was her birthday and she told me hey why don't you come here for some drinks and I was like, okay I will go just for one drink and then I will go back home that didn't happen <laughs> If I return to my house until next day, Sunday morning, and I was like, I'm so tired. <laughs> this, is, this life is not for me anymore. <laughs> you know, when you are young, like in your 20s, you can go out. You can go out Friday, you can go out Saturday, and you can go out Sunday, and you feel like nothing, right? But then when you're in your 30s, you go out one time, and you feel like you are dying. Yes. So that well... The last weekend, mm -hmm. uh, I I went to a bat baptism. Mm -hmm. Baptism. Baptism. Then birthday. 
Uh -huh. En Nai, eh, eh, ¿cómo se dice la relación? ¿El qué? Velación. Oh, I don't know. They have got to be like a funeral, right? Ajá, como como el funeral. Yo dije, ay, no. <laughs> so you or, were event. Or the events. Uh -huh. One uh, event after another. Just a 15 birthday, creo que me falta. <laughs> That would be the cherry on top. <laughs> Nice. Well, at least you got to do your chores. Lo oficio, since the fin. <laughs> Good. Hi, Vladimir. How are you? Hi, Jorge. How are you? Hi, Mayra. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Juan Carlos. How are you? Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm happy to see you guys. Remember, these are the last three classes of this module. We just have classes today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, and that, that and then the module is over, okay? So let's go ahead and check how you guys are doing with the platform. Did you work on the platform during the weekend? Oh, nobody did it. <laughs> let's check, okay? Let's see how you guys are doing in the platform. Let's check your score. Okay, we have Carlos Vladimir already completed. Um, Cesar also already completed. Let's see, Dairo, he didn't return. We have Eduardo almost completed. You are pending the homework from week four. And then it's also pending the final exam. Then we have Emerson completed the platform. Yeah, even the final. Fatima also, Fatima is missing all the platforms. Then Jonathan Jose, all the platform except the final. We need to, to do this again. In homework three, you need to take it again. This is too low. We need to raise your course in there, okay? Then we have Jonathan Guzman. We don't know who that is. And then we have the para abajo, the brilliant people. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> so so brilliant. We have Jorge completed the platform. Yes, yes, yes. Also Jose Carlos. Jose Lopez. Also, you just need to do this one one more time. <laughs> what is 75? Needs to be at least 95. Juan Carlos also completed the platform, yeah. Then Juan Jose, we got him there. Carla, yay, very good. You already completed the platform. This is the final exam that you're missing, right? That's pending, okay? We're gonna do it tomorrow, so don't worry. Guys. We can do it here in the class, okay? And then Kenya, yeah, Kenya also completed the platform. Mauricio, same thing. Now we're let's see Mayra. Let's see Mayra. She already completed. Yeah. Yeah. Also, even the exam. We're good, Mayra. Nice job. Nelly, the same. We're good, Nelly. Um, Raul, I don't remember who's Raul there. Sandra Abigail. Abigail, very good. You completed the platform. Este hay que retomarlo para que no nos quede tan bajito. And then on the other side, we have Wendy. Wendy, veamos. Tarea 3 y tarea 4, hay que hacerlas de nuevo, Wendy. Hay que subirlas, por lo menos llegar al 95 en cada una, ¿ok? Para, para que no nos quede muy bajito el promedio y siempre nos garanticen ir al siguiente módulo, ¿ok? So, and then we're just, have, we're just spending the final exam, which is the one we're doing tomorrow, Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we just come to the final practice, okay? So that would be it. And now, I'm going to share with you guys the conversation topic we have for tonight, the questions that you're going to be answering. We have first impression, all right? I'm going to share the screen. 
And as you can see there, these questions are for you to think a little bit more before answering, right? Like, you know, sometimes you see questions and you start answering immediately, right? But these questions for this topic tonight about first impressions, some of them we're gonna have to think a little bit the question, the answers before we give them. For example, look at the first question. When you look at someone, what makes you think that they are dangerous? Or what makes you think that they are greedy? Or what makes you think they are intelligent? And all of this, right? When you look at someone the first time, like you don't know this person, but you see them for the first time, what makes you think they are dangerous, for example? Um, in my case, if I see that, you know how sometimes people look neutral, neutral face, but some people look like they're angry all the time, right? If I see that they are that they look angry, like when I see them and if they look angry in my head, first impression, this is a dangerous person, <laughs> right? But maybe in maybe if I see a person, the greedy, you don't you don't really know just by seeing, uh, just by looking at someone greedy, codicioso. Just by looking at a person, you don't you cannot really can tell, you cannot really tell, right? Um uh, can tell darse cuenta. Can tell darse cuenta. Como notar. Can tell como notar. For example, I cannot tell or I can tell, dependiendo. I in my case, I cannot tell if a person is greedy just by looking at them. Okay, no me puedo dar cuenta, no puedo notar si son codiciosos solo con vista, right? I cannot tell that. But I can tell if a person is generous just by looking at them, if in the moment that I see them, maybe they are doing something generous with another person, right? It will depend. So you have other options to, um, to answer, right? For example, do you like to meet new people or do you prefer to hang out with people that you already know? Are you an extrovert or an introvert? <laughs> Why? And then, for example, have you met someone who you hated right away, even though you didn't know them? I have. <laughs> I have. When I used to live, when I used to live alone, and I first moved in to that house, I saw my neighbors the first time, and I hated them. The first time I saw them, I hated them <laughs> because they were being mean to their kids. They had cats, and they were being really bad with it. So I hated them in that moment. Right. <laughs> So remember, you can always share a story or share examples when you want to answer the questions. You don't necessarily have to use a specific um, specific rule, right? Try to answer them as natural as possible, right? If you want to answer them with a story, if you want to answer them with an example, that's perfect, right? The idea is that whichever question you select, you try to extend your answer right try to extend your answers as much as possible that's what we're looking for here entre más fluido más habla una persona in this level you practice more but when you're talking in real life with another person in english the more you speak the more you sound like you are fluent right a fluent person can speak can talk and talk and talk and talk it doesn't matter if what they are saying, it's not interesting, but they will talk and talk and talk because they are fluent in the language, right? But if you are not fluent, you're going to give short answers. And that's what we're trying to change, to avoid, right? So for this one, because the questions are really to give a more thought, we're going to go into the breakout rooms, into the breakout rooms, and you're going to have 15 minutes to discuss. Remember, this you can select whichever questions you want to answer. They can be two or three questions. That's up to you, right? So I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes in the breakout rooms so you can choose and answer the questions with your classmates. And when we return, you're going to share it with the, re with the rest of the class. You're going to share your answer. Las salas están abiertas. Pueden ingresar para que puedan practicar las preguntas y respuestas en las salas y cuando regresemos lo compartan con los demás. Let's go in. Vamos ingresando, por favor. Let's go in the rooms.
teacher. Dígame. I'm still working right now. Um, um, sorry, I I will tengo demasiado listening ahorita. Y, so, y nadie me avisó que iba a estar solo Mauricio y ahorita usted. Sí, que de último momento me pidieron quedarme justo ahorita. Voy saliendo, entonces okay. voy a ir conectada en el camino. Uh -huh. All right. Thanks for letting me know.
Well, hello, we're all back. Let me hear the answers to your questions. We're going to see, we're going to listen to the first room. We have Jose Romero, Carla Cecilia, and Wendy Maricela, right? Let me hear you guys. Okay. When uh, we choose the number one. Okay. I answer the number one. Do you like to meet new people or do you prefer to hang out with people you already know? Uh, both. Uh, <laughs> we prefer to hang out with people I we already know mm. because it's more mm. is more comfortable. 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 Mm. And um, uh, Jose says uh, that the uh, we know. Uh, who talk depend the people. <laughs> is serious, serious, is joker, joker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're saying that depending on, you don't base your opinion based on how they look, but based on how they speak, right? <laughs> All right. That's yeah. a good, that's a different yeah. approach. La, the second is for Wendy. When and where did you meet most of your friends for the first time? Wendy? Ahorita, teacher, que me trabo la compu. Ahí está, ahí está. Ahí está, ahí está, ahí está. Yes, I have um, meet people uh, at work, but I am not very friendly. Okay. In fact, I am not very social. Um, I like to spend more time. I have why my gears or it depends on the confidence I have. All right. Good answer, Wendy. <laughs> no, no muy confident, teacher. All right. <laughs> it's, I understand. I can understand that. Not yeah. everyone is like that, right? There are two sides. People that are overconfident, then people that need to be more confident, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. I have a more no, fran no friends, only mm -hmm. colleague world. Colleges, uh, work. Just colleagues, work. Just colleagues, colleague, I work. See, yeah. <laughs> All yes, right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sometimes it's better to be like that. Yes. <laughs> with people at work, you never know. <laughs> what about Jose? I tried the number three. Have you met someone who you hated the right way, even though you didn't know them? Mm. I don't remember if I prejudice to someone because by my job I am I I used to treat with a lot of people and so I don't have a, any any first impression of them so because in my opinion is is easy is what I have to, to talk before for to take an impression about what type of person I am meeting in in this time right mm -hmm. so I, I don't remember if i hate someone before meet them because i guess it's not what you it, it's because you receive what you give so mm -hmm. i guess we have to 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 try to get a conversation and so if yeah over there we we, we are looking who is the person with whom we are trying well, mm -hmm. and it depends. After that, yes, I may hate it, but before, no, I don't have a, this mm -hmm. this habit. That's my that's, opinion. I, that's nobody, mm -hmm. nobody, uh, spring to my mind when I listen when I read this question. All right, that's good. That's a a good approach. Like, do not. What do they call it when you when you make your first uh prejudge 
right? A prejudge. Right? Uh -huh. I, like, I, I don't used to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, very yes. good. Thank you. Very nice answers. Carla, Jose, Wendy, very fluent also. Thank you. All right, so now we're going to listen to the answers of the next room. And in here we have, let's see, we have Emerson, we have Juan Carlos, and we have Paul. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Okay, um, I choose the, the question, uh, do you like meeting a new people uh, or do you prefer to hang, to hang out with the people you are ready now? Personally, I don't really like meeting a new people. Uh, at my age, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think, <laughs> I, I think the, we are the, the uh, we are the, uh, no, we are very uh, selective uh, about that because uh, when we are adult, uh, we have a, a different customs and values. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or custom or values uh, sometimes is uh, very complicated. Uh, adapt uh, to the other other peoples. Yeah, definitely. And, mm -hmm. We we must uh, also be have careful uh, too, because uh, some people uh, are a good person, and the other people uh, not much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not everyone is a good person. <laughs> it's correct. Uh, for example, uh, two years ago. Uh, I know uh, I met a I met a, a new a new person a, mm -hmm. a new friend. Uh, uh, he has a, a a custom to smoke smoking. Oh okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and I start to smoking too. Oh. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, you pick the bad habit. <laughs> it's correct. Uh, I know uh, that you. And I, and I I do when I I uh, I was with he, uh, with him mm -hmm. with him and I uh, him yes mm -hmm. and I decided uh, to try a little because <laughs> the, the curious that uh -huh, the, that's uh, was affecting me. Mm, okay. Well, that's a perfect example, right? <laughs> Very good. Thanks for sharing, Juan Carlos. What about the others? Well, in my case, I choose... <clears throat> Sorry. Mm -hmm. oh, what are the best ways to make a good first impression? For me, um, well, I have to show the different qualities and the best ways for to make a good first impression are to be polite respect respectful when i talk to the people uh, do not use the rule language i don't uh, have uh, say the different words uh, groceries I don't know and mm -hmm. I became be honest I just I, I I try to be a a, a respectful has as both has possible when I talk about the other people or, or when I have the opportunity to meet the the other people mm -hmm. uh, is is very important uh be respectful with that. Being the respectful government. is always a good a good impression. You always leave a good impression, right? Yes. That's a good a good idea, <laughs> like a good technique. If you want to create cause, if you want to cause a good impression, just be respectful, right? Be respectful, be honest, be polite. <laughs> so yes, that's a good tip. Something. And did anybody else participate in the room? The All right, Emerson, which one did you choose? Well, um, 
I remember someone made me a uh, some question and mm -hmm. I answered this. Uh, what are the most important moments to make a good impression, first impression? And I think it's when you have a make a presentation in front of the important people, then you have a, a have a, a good comment of subjects that show confidence. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that always shows. It reflects, right? It shows confidence. That's right. Thank you for participating, guys. Very well, good. Okay, listen. Um, right now I'm going to take attendance, but I'm going to show you guys the list of attendance because I want you to check your attendance percentage, right? Most of you should have 80% by the end of the module, which means by Wednesday, the day after tomorrow, when we finish, you should be completing a total of 80% attendance, right? If you have not completed it, make sure that you still connect and don't miss not don't miss a, a single class, but make sure to not miss do not miss any class, all right, from the ones that we have left. Okay, so I just want you to take your percentage and then I'm gonna start with the with your names, right? Right now, just like take a look how you are doing. Carlos Vladimir at 55, Dairo at 18, Eduardo at 67. Emerson, you're you're good. You got already completed your 80%, but if you want to get to 80 uh, to 100, it's still you have to connect to the class. <laughs> we really appreciate you being here. Then we have Fatima at 56, Jonathan at 66, Jorge almost there at 73, Emma Jose Bernardo and Jose Carlos. Then Jose Cesar shows at 67. Juan Carlos, very good, doing an 83. Juan Jose at 62. Carla, almost there, Carlita, 74. Kenya is at 72. Mauricio, you are at 83. Mayra at 67. Nelly at 63. Then we have Sandra Abigail at 73, almost there. And then Wendy, right? So I'm going to say this in Spanish. Just I don't want anyone to say I don't understand that. Um, tienen tres clases. Tienen ahora, pasado, ahora, mañana y pasado mañana, que son las últimas clases del módulo para llegar a su 80%. Asegúrense de participar lo más que puedan en las clases y de obviamente de conectarse antes para participar, ¿no? Para que puedan llegar al porcentaje mínimo requerido para que en support les pueda aceptar y continúen avanzando en los siguientes módulos, ¿right? La idea La mayoría de ustedes ya están listos para ir avanzando, así que solo hay que, solo hay que cumplir con esta parte, ¿no? All right. So, I'm going to take attendance. So, please be ready to say your name. I'm sorry, to say present or here when you listen to your name, all right? So, we have Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez. Yes, present teacher. Thank you. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan Jose González. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, teacher. Yeah. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. Jose César Lemos. Present, Juan... teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera. Present. Thank you. Juan José Herrera. Present. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Lilibeth Andrade. Present. Thank you, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you, Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present. Right. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna be reviewing a very, very easy topic, but still is very useful and it's also very easy to forget if we don't review. So we're gonna be talking about adverbs, right? Different to the 
adjectives, right? Remember the adjectives are words that qualify the noun, okay? Yellow ball, yellow is the adjective, ball is the noun, yellow ball. Black, cell phone, black is the adjective, cell phone is the noun. Adjectives qualify nouns, but that's easy, right? But now we're talking about adverbs. The adverbs are a little bit more versatile because the adverb can change, modify, or qualify the same adjective. They can qualify or modify verbs. The adverbs can also be used to modify or qualify clauses and also other adverbs, right? So it has a lot of different uses. And then we're gonna start doing some reading, okay? A good way to understand adverbs is to think about them as the words that provide context. This is literally what they do, right? Depending on the function, okay? And specifically, adverbs provide a description of how something is done, how, where, when, in what manner, or to what extent something is done when it happens, right? Normally, you can spot an adverb or you can confirm that it's an adverb by the fact that it often finishes or ends in li, in L Y li, carefully, early, happily, right? If you see that it finishes like that, it's an adverb, right? But there are also other adverbs that they don't finish that way, right? But those we can combine. So we're gonna need volunteers to read. Um, I need two people to read this part. And the first person is going to read this. And then the second person is going to be this. Okay. Just a moment. Okay, we have Cesar. Cesar, help us reading this part, please. Until a standalone from the beginning, the standalone. And then Jorge, please help us to read from this part until here. Few examples. Okay. Okay, teacher. Let's go. Traditionally considered a single part of speech adverbs performed a wide variety, variety. variety of functions, making it difficult to treat them as a single unified category. However, spotting an adverb, especially one that ends in li, why is easy? Adverbs normally help paint a full, full, fuller picture by describing how something happens. So uh, as when, for example, when she always arrives early, how he drives carefully, where they go everywhere together, in what way she eats slowly, to what extent it is terrible hot, this function is providing more information about how something is done, is called the adverbial function, and it may be accomplished by using adverbial clauses and adverbial phrase as well as by adverbs that stand alone. Very good. Okay, so now uh, let's go with her. There are many rules for using adverbs and these rules often depend upon which type of adverbs you are using. Remember this basic and using adverbs to make sentences more meaningful, meaningful will be easier for you. Adverbs can always be used to modify verbs. Notice that the second of these two sentences is much more interesting, simple, because it's contained an adverb. The dog ran. You can picture a dog running, but you don't really know much more about this is in. The dog ran excitedly. You can picture a dog running, wagging its tail, panting happily, and looking glad to see its owner. You can paint a much more interesting picture in your head when you know how or why the dog is running. Adverbs are often formed by adding the letters 
li to adjectives. This makes it very easy to identify adverbs in sentences. There are many exceptions of this rule everywhere, nowhere, up, and upstairs, and a few examples. Mm -hmm. In this part, for me, please. This last one, an adverb, and this part. Okay. And Adverb can be used to modify an adjective and intensify the meaning in conveys. For example, my math teacher is incredibly impassioned. Patience. This movie is more interesting than the first one. Correct. Thank you. So if you if you see the adverbs are very versatile and they have different scenarios where you can incorporate them. And you have the example here, right? Because the adverbs are going to give you more information, depending, they can give you more information about the adverb, about the verb, about the noun, right? So we have the example. Look at this sentence, the dog ran. You see it in your head, but you don't know where it's running to, how is it running, right? And then in the second one, when you incorporate an adverb, same sentence, it's made more complex. The dog ran excitedly. Oh, now I see the dog running in my head and it's excited, right? Wagging its tail, panting, running. So it gives you more information, right? Um, if I tell you, for example, my math teacher is patient. That's a normal sentence. It doesn't tell you much, right? But if I tell you, like, if I tell you my math teacher is patient, you're, I mean, that's normal. Every teacher is patient. But if I tell you my math teacher is incredibly patient, I'm giving you more information. I'm telling you that it's more than the normal pages, right? So I'm giving you extra information in that case. Now, the adverbs have different scenarios, like different types, right? The ones that we're going to talk about tonight are going to be adverbs of manner. And then we're also going to talk about the adverbs of frequency. Those are the two the one we're, that we're going to be talking about, right? Or adverbs of time as you want. And then basically, and then the position, where do they go in the sentence, right? Let's talk about the adverbs of manner, which are the adverbs of frequency. You know most of them, how to use them, right? But we're going to talk about the adverbs of manner, which are a little less known, okay? So I'm going to need a well, two volunteers to read the adverse of manner. Person one is going to read this part. And then the second person is going to read it, this part. Okay, we need two volunteers to read adverse of manner. Carlita, help us with the first part, please. Adverse of manner. And we need one more volunteer for this part. Wendy, please help us with the with the second part. Let's begin, Carla. Adverse of manner. 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 Spelling, spelling as the adjective for some examples of adverbs of manners include slowly, rapidly, closely, badly, diligently, diligently, <laughs> diligently, <laughs> diligently mm -hmm. sweetly, warmly, and sadly. Thank you. Uh, Wendy, please. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Wendy with the second part. Read the teacher. <clears throat> Adverb of manner example. In the following sentences are involved for AC identification. She based the exam easily. The work quickly to cut, cut the rain. The dinner Party went badly. 
question answering the question correctly. Notice, notice how the adverb are formed by adding, adding to the adjective, but correct and quick. Adouse, there is, is a, is, 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 slight, a spelling change when forming a verb, why the adjective AC. As mentioned, some adverb of manner take the same spelling is the adjective I never add only to the end. The boys had a work hard, the cars drive, the Julia dance well. Dance as well, very good. Okay, so the rule is telling you the adverbs of manner are the adverbs that qualify the verbs. Okay, the adverbs of manner qualify the action verb. For example, I run, I run. Okay, how do I run? Oh, I run quickly. Okay, los adverbios de, de, los adverbios de manera o adverbios de modo nos expresan cómo, cómo se lleva a cabo el verbo. Okay, they explain how the verb happens. Okay, for example, I speak English. I speak English slowly, right? I speak English is the normal. How do I speak English? Como me lo califican? Ah, the teacher speaks slowly, right? The adverb tell you how the verbs are done, right? How the action verbs happen. And you can use different ones, right? Badly, diligently, sweetly, sadly, warmly, any of those. And now we're gonna talk about the placement. Where do you, where can you place them, right? In a sentence, okay? And we'll talk about the position of the adverb. For example, positions with adjectives and other adverbs. I need two volunteers to read this part. See, we're gonna need two or, yeah, two volunteers for this part. First person is going to read this, okay? Uh, go ahead, please. Adverb position with adjectives and other adverbs. This adverb will usually be placed before the adjectives and adverb being modified. We gave them a really top map. The adverb really modified the adjective top. It is quite windy that night. The adverb quite modifies the adjective windy. We don't go to the movies terrible often. The adverb terrible modify the adverb often. Thank you. Let's go with the next part, Mayra, please. Okay. Adverb position with verbs. This can be a bit trickier, trickier because it will depend on the type of verb. Of adverb like place, position, time, etc. And there are many exceptions to the rules. However, a basic set of guidelines is shown below. Thank you. And we have, do we have another volunteer to read to help Maida with this part? You're going to read this, the example basically. We need another volunteer to read the example. You're just going to read it. Abigail, please. Adverbs of mana, manner or place. Mm -hmm. or place are usually posi Position? positions at the end of the sentence. Mm -hmm. She loved timidly. 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 Mm -hmm. I struck the cut Henkley Jani live here there is money everywhere okay 
Mm, What do you mean Henkley? Amablemente. ¿Cuál? Gently. Henkley. Gently. Gentilmente. Ok. Uh -huh. Gently. Affirmation. If the arbor is of the finish time, it will be placed at the end of the center. Uh -huh. I did it yesterday. We can discuss it tomorrow. Let's go to Paris next week. However, if it is a indefinite period of time, it will go between the subject and made bear. We often go to Paris in the springtime they be regularly swims here body and Audrey, Audrey mm -hmm. always love fishing by the lake the lake very the good lake. thank you Abigail very good job okay so guys there are two different ways where you can use adverbs. You can use them to modify or qualify adjectives and other adverbs, right? Really difficult. Difficult is an adjective. Really is the adverb. I am modifying the adjective. That is really difficult, right? Quite windy. Quite quiere decir muy. Muy con mucho viento, right? Muy fresco. And then terribly often. Terriblemente seguido, como demasiado seguido, no vamos, right? And then you have the other ones, the adverbs that are modifying or qualifying verbs, okay? I, for example, she laughed timidly. She laughed, ella se rió. ¿Cómo se rió? Timidamente, right? It's qualifying the verb, okay? I stroked the cat gently, stroke, acariciar, okay? I stroked the cat, yo acaricié el gato. ¿Cómo lo hice? Gently, gentilmente, right? Here, it's a, this is a preposition. Uh, it's an adverb of position, right? An adverb of position, same as everyone, right? So, if it's about verbs, por lo general, van al, van al final, después del verb, right? Not necessarily so, but most of the time, okay? Y si están modificando adverbios o adjectives, el adverb va antes. Really difficult, very pretty, quite windy, right? In those scenarios, they go before. But if they are modifying verbs, they go after the verb, right? So what you're going to do right now is that you're going to create sentences. This is going to be individual, okay? We're just going to practice right now with the adverbs of manner, okay? Y con estos ejemplos que tenemos acá, slowly, rapidly, clumsily, Badly, diligently, sweetly, warmly, subtly. Pick two. Pick two and make two sentences using them, okay? Select two of these adverbs and make two sentences incorporating. En este escenario, cualquiera de estos son para hablar del verbo, right? Adverbs of manner califican al verbo. Entonces lo vamos a hacer en ese escenario. For example, my coworker sends email diligently during the morning. My coworker sends emails diligently during the morning. Sends emails is a little send. He sends emails diligently during the morning, right? And then sadly, my cat got sick last week. Sadly, my cat got sick last week. Okay, you can, depending on where you place, so you're going to choose two, escojan dos y hagan dos oraciones, right? From this list. Talking about the verb, using them to describe the verb. Because it's two sentences only, I'm going to give you five minutes to create your sentences. Write them down, please. This is individual. And you have five minutes.
Okay, I'm gonna read the sentences from Mauricio because he's still at work. But the other ones, please don't send them to the chat. Make sure you write them on your notebooks or cell phones and then you share them. You you, you tell them, okay? Uh, Mauricio says, I opened the door slowly. And then he said, this restaurant is badly managed. <laughs> Very good, Mauricio, those sentences on point. Okay, if anybody else has their two sentences completed, let me hear them, please. Carlita, can you read your sentences, please? I don't know, but what is short? <laughs> I'm sorry? The number one is short. Ah, okay, no, no problem. We just want to know that, that you can incorporate it. Uh, the turtle run slowly in the park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good, it's fine. In the second, my sister, ah, is Phil. Uh, my Phil. sister Phil, Phil. feels sad. Sadly, because the series she watched ending. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Carlita. All right. Let's see the other ones. Well, mm -hmm. in, in my case, teacher, mm -hmm. the first one is I speak English very slowly. All right. And the second one, I am very diligently in my job. <laughs> I am very diligently in my job. Very good. Let's see who else. See, do we have other sentences? Juan Carlos, read your sentences, please. The teacher, my first, my first sentence is, uh, my mother used to sing a uh, suit. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is, uh, when my sister was a child, uh, she used to go short diligently. 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 Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. And Carlos, thank you. All right. So, guys, do we have more sentences? No? Me, teacher. Go ahead. Okay. When my dad comes home, I hug you warmly. Mm -hmm. He is very fond of cats and spotting them very swiftly. All right, very good. Those two sentences on point, Marcel, very well done. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're gonna go up to the students panel. I'm gonna share the screen with you. Just a moment. And we have a conversation here. We have a conversation here between Jorge and Susan. Do we do this already? Mm, no, right. Eso no lo hicimos. We haven't done this one. Do you remember? We did this on Friday. No, right? Oh, yeah. No, we haven't done that. <laughs> so we're going to read. We're going to need two volunteers. One person is going to be Susan, and one person is going to be Jorge. Let's see. Um, Jorge, you can be yourself. You can read Jorge, please. And Cesar, help us reading Susan. Please, go ahead. Okay. I am having a bad time with my business. Susan, I need some advice about inventory management. Okay, I see you keep not on any scrap of paper, George. The first step to implement an organic inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you do this in a spreadsheet and record note there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here, the labels are falling off the packages. By leveling inventory properly, you ensure that your product gets stored accurately in the right sports so that your employees can find them easily 
when needed. Very good, thank you. We're gonna go with round number two. We need other two readers. Are there another two readers, please? Another volunteers. One person for Harvey and one person for Susan. Round number two. Same same conversation. You're just going to read it. Okay, Mayra, help us reading Jorge, please. And Jose, if you can help us reading Susan. Okay. Okay. I having a bad time with my business, Susan. I need some advice about inventory management. Okay. I see you keeping notes on any scrap of paper, Jorge. The first step to implement an organized inventory management system is getting all of your product and vendor information in one place. I recommend you this in a spreadsheet on record notes there consistently. Sure, I can do that. I didn't really give much attention to my notes. Now you know, and look here. The level the labels are failing I are falling off the package by labeling inventory properly and ensure that your products get stored accurately in the right spot so that employees can find them easily when they need it. Perfect, very good. So if you see they are using here adverbs of manner. Right, properly, accurately, easily, consistently. They are adverbs of manner. They describe or they qualify verbs. Right, they are not qualifying adjectives. They are qualifying verbs. Okay, so based on that conversation, from there we have the question. Question number one: What are Jorge's bad practices in the inventory management? What are Jorge's bad practices in the inventory management? Any scrap of paper. He keeps notes on any scrap of paper, right? He doesn't keep notes in the system, in the computer, on Excel, on Word. No, he, he does it on a scrap of paper and pay that for the pocket, right? So that's a bad practice for inventory management, right? Question number two, what are Susan's recommendations to solve some of the issues? What are her recommendations? The first step, implement uh, organic organis inventory management. Mm -hmm. first and step. recommended mm -hmm. to use the spreadsheet Exactly, right? She gives them different uh, advices there. And then question number three, what is another suggestion you could give Jorge to get his inventory organized? We could give him this one, right? By labeling inventory properly, you ensure your product gets started accurately in the right spots, right? So that your employees can find them easily when they are, when they need it. Okay. So let's see. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the breakout rooms right now, and you're going to create a conversation in which you are going to incorporate at least some of the adverbs of manner. Okay. You're gonna have 15 minutes to create your conversation. It's going to be free topic. Okay, it can be any topic, any context, not necessarily inventory or, or management. It can be any topic. The only requirement is that you incorporate adverbs of manner. Okay. Las salas están abiertas a partir de este momento. Pueden ingresar. Tienen 15 minutos para hacer esa conversación. Incorporando adverbios que califican a los verbos. Okay, adverbs of manner. You have 15 minutes. You can go into the rooms. Pueden ingresar a las salas.
Alrighty, we're all back. We're going to begin listening to the conversations that you have created with your class. We're going to start with room number four, and in here we have, no, we're going to start with room number three, sorry. That's with Cesar and Jorge. Go ahead, guys. Okay, teacher. Okay, teacher. Cesar, are you there? Yes. Okay. Hello, Cesar. I have a problem in the morning with the traffic. Hi, Jorge. What happened? Tell me. What was the problem? The traffic is very slowly because the road is under repair. Oh, Jorge, I understand you, man. I had a problem too. Uh, sadly, I woke up really late and I had to try uh, so um so rapidly but the traffic it was the principal problem and for that reason i arrived really late to my work i understand in my case i feel very tired because i wake up very early in the morning but i like to be diligently in my job yes when i arrived to my work i had to uh, I had to talk with my boss and we have uh, a, a conversation. I explained my problem and he understood me. It was uh, so easy. I hope one day it gets better. I wish you luck. Okay, thank you, Jorge. Okay, thank you. Very well. <laughs> that was a really good conversation. I noticed that you were using not only adverbs of manner, but you were also using adverbs to qualify the adjective. Like that way I came very late, right? So that's really good, guys. They incorporated them and you used them correctly. Thank you. All right. We're gonna go with room number five right now. We're, no, room number four, sorry. We're gonna listen to Juan Carlos and Mayra's conversation. Okay. <laughs> We problem is the same. The traffic. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Mayra. Um, okay. Um, hello, Mayra. How are you? Hello. I am really thinking sometimes. Okay. Um, I want to ask uh, something. I have no if uh, the we stop or we we work um, are late uh, are arriving late in, in the work. Um, tell them that the traffic is very slow. I think the the new traffic light system is not installed properly. Uh, do you see uh, there are something else uh, to you uh, to do? Uh, sorry, to do so that all employees uh, can arrive quickly? Yes, I am a little worried about that. And I think a quick solution will be for people to work from home. Ah, okay. Um, I, I think it's a good idea. Uh, do, you, do you think uh, that could help us uh, improve the all employees? Uh, all right quickly yes honestly i i have worked uh, like this and if attendance and complaints improve a lot ah okay okay um can you help me create the, the, the home office plan uh, for all employees incredible i work in a plan about that right now I send you later. Ah, okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, I appreciate your help. Uh, you will work ethics efficiently. <laughs> and I trust you, okay? Thank you. Okay, thanks. Nice job. <laughs> I like this conversation. It was very fluent. It was very natural. And the adverbs will use exactly the, like the way they are supposed to, right? To qualify verbs and then you also use some to qualify other adjectives. So very good, Maida Juan Carlos. You were using them correctly. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go with room number five and here we have um, Carla Sofia and Wendy Maricel. Go ahead. Okay, you start Wendy. Hello. Hello. Hello, Carlita. Hello. How, how do you, I do my job? Oh, hello, Wendy. Uh, I do my job the, in the best possible way, but in occasions it's necessary to do rapidly the things because the customer suddenly asks for things. But it's good. <laughs> and what about you, Wendy? <clears throat> I do I love I like to my job car careful um carefully carefully Carita. Oh you stay me very fin the do we date right Okay um Uh, Wendy tell me uh, she verified the do do it date because because it is just that most we don't will because it is delicate um, and I I answers <laughs> uh, you are right Wendy uh, because the do it date is very important to verify in the products. Uh, because, for example, once I didn't check the <laughs> inspiration days on the Asoda and try it, <laughs> I tested horrible like mood, and I told me I told my boss to try it then, and, and it was experienced since two thousand eighty. <laughs> Fortunately, it did not happen to us anymore. <laughs> but the job about Wendy is very important. <laughs> yes, Carlita. The inspiration diet size and delicate. Um, also for the client, they verify it. Um, how did this salary rule? <laughs> Only. All right, very good. Yes. I like I like that you also use some of the other combinations of adverbs that I gave you. For example, very delicate, right? In that case, you're qualifying an adjective. So you use adverbs to qualify verbs, and you also use adverbs to qualify adjectives. So very good job, Carla, Wendy. Thank you. And then we have Emerson and Jose Romero on room number six. Please. Hi, Jose. How are you? Hi, Emerson. How's it going? Hey, how's did you drive in Tesco? Badly. Why? What happened? Well, um, uh, drove too quickly in the school zone. Oh, that's uh, that is not good. Well, what else happened during the, the, the year's driving test? Um, well, I also drove over the neatly cute lawn in front of the livery. So I guess that's driving lesson which we prayed for were no good. What did you think should happen? I should practice driving more. I need to learn how to drive more carefully. Yes, that is true. Anyway, I am going to make Tinder now. All right. 
<laughs> Very well. We'll use this to use them those adverbs, right? <laughs> In a real life scenario. <laughs> Very fluent conversation also. And I like that you follow the rules exactly before and at the end, right? So now, listen, this is the only way you can know if you know how to use a uh, grammar part, right? If I don't practice, if I don't speak, even if I understand it here, but if I don't speak it, I'm really not learning, right? So the only way you can be sure that you are learning it, it's practicing, generating the language by yourself which is what you guys did in this conversation. So very good job. So now going back to the topic for tonight, we were talking about inventory management, right? And then we have four tips. We're gonna do a little bit of reading about tips, how you can manage your inventory. Remember the last week we were talking about warehouse management. Today, we're talking about inventory management, right? Not the warehouse, but the inventory inside the warehouse. That's what we're going to learn how to manage, right? So, and then here you have the introduction, right? It says inventory management. It's a pain point that plagues many retailers. Everybody has problems keeping an inventory management, right? If you don't have a strategy, it can be really difficult and you can make mistakes that may cost you money or even worse they may cost you other business right so let's check let's talk about how to make a plan i'm gonna need one let's see one two three four four people to read and we need four volunteers to read each person is going to read one category okay Maida, please help us with the first one make a plan and execute Emerson, please help us with number two, use multiple vendors. And we need another person for these other two. Carlita, help us with number three, please. Um, and let's see, let's begin with that one. Let's begin with number one, please. Okay. Make a plan and then execute. Execute. Execute, yeah. Execute, okay. Inventory management. Inventory management is a continuous con concentrated effort in a process that should, should don't be handled solely at, at the operation level. A successful inventory plan should also involve your marketing, catalog, e commerce and merchandising departments. By managing your inventory against a master pro promotional cal calendar, everyone wins. You purchasing team understand when and when and how much product to buy. Your fulfillment provider knows when they prepare additional warehouse space and your contact center staff can anticipate increased scale volume. And previous years, sell forecast to your inventory calendar to be even more prepared for seasonal spikes in demand. My spikes, como es, que se dispara, right? On demand, so yeah. You gotta make a plan and then execute it, right? If you don't have a plan on how you're going to manage or organize and that with your inventory, it's gonna be really difficult for you to keep track, right? Some of the plans that you can have, for example, you can use the help from other areas, for example, from marketing, creating catalogs or e-commerce or merchandising departments, all of them, are included in the creating of a management plan for your inventory. Let's go with number two, use multiple vendors, please. Use multiple vendors. Inventory management also means vendors management. If you have a high ceiling items that are difficult to keep in a store uh, or are planning a promotion that will significantly increase demand. It often makes sense to commission a season vendor for the product as a back 
backup plane. This helps prevent a long lead time and all of the stock when uses are risk with the primary vendors or inventory doesn't arrive at the warehouse at all. Thank you. So yeah, inventory management also involves using multiple vendors, right? If you have a product that is like best seller product, you don't want to get out of uh, get like out of stock. Okay, you don't want to have it out of stock. Oh, sorry, we don't have it anymore. Sorry, we are out of stock. Right? You don't want that situation. We have a best seller product. You want to be supplied. You want to have it in stock so that whenever people order, you have it ready. So for that, sometimes you may need to use multiple vendors, not just one, but multiple, right? Especially, especially when, or if you're planning a promotion in your, in your page or in your store, if you're planning to make a promotion, you know it's going to sell a lot of that product, then you create um, a demand and then you gotta be ready. So you use multiple providers, right? Multiple vendors. And now let's go with number three, consistent, constant communication. Consist, constant communication. Uh, a good relationship with your vendors is it's crucial to your company's success, especially if you outsource any part of your retail operations. Your fulfillment provider becomes your brand in the eyes of the customer. So it's important that they understand your plan for your inventory as well as you do. This means constant communication of your promotional plans, product information, and upcoming releases. Every retailer wants a flexible, trusted fulfillment provider. But I retailers should also be flexible and trusting in order to make their relationship work seamlessly. All right. When <laughs> we have another adverb here, seamlessly, <laughs> seamlessly. Sim, sim son las posturas. Okay. Si se ve una postura, es como imperfect, right? And so seamlessly. Quiere decir suave, liso. En este caso se refiere a trabajar de continuo, ¿vale? trabajar sin problema, dicho de otro modo. ¿vale? Una relación que, traba, que pueda funcionar sin problemas, smooth. Otra forma de decirlo, seamlessly. ¿vale? Without problems, without any issues there. ¿vale? So, this paragraph is talking about consistent, constant communication between... If you are a retailer, between you and the supplier. But if you are a supplier, it's a communication between you and the retailers, right? Or the sellers, people who are going to distribute your product, right? Mm, some products, you don't always have them in stock because the raw materials, maybe you run out of them, right? So you got to be communicating. If it's a very fast-selling product, a best-selling product, of course, you're going to run out of it fast, right? But you gotta be communicating with your vendors like constantly to know, is this going to be available next month? Is this going to be available next week? So that you can plan ahead with time, how many units or how much quantity you're going to buy to have in your inventory, right? So for that communication, definitely key, right? And then the last point or the last tip, to make an organized, uh, an organized management for inventory, you got to create compliance policies, right? For this one, you can do the procedures, the standard procedures, like sheets, specific product specification sheet, keeping guide, packaging and stock instructions, billing guidelines, and so on, right? With all of those, you create compliance, okay? How you make them, comply, complete, okay? Politica de cumplimiento. How you want them to trade your product, how many, how it should be packaged, how you want to receive it, etc. right? So all of those guidelines, they should be there, right? You should create a compliance. If you don't have a policy for this, how are you going to measure? How are you going to know if they are giving you what you want in the way you want it in the time you want it? If you are not 
checking the compliance from your vendors or your distributors, right? Okay, we're gonna stop here for tonight with that part. I'm gonna take attendance once more. So please be ready when I call your name. Just to say uh, here or present, okay? Um, Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose González. Present. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Present, teacher. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present, teacher. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Present, Thank you. Thank you. And Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Okay, so guys, reminder, work on the platform if you haven't. Ian, I'm going to say this also in Spanish. Um, completar la plataforma, los que no lo han hecho, la semana 4, las tareas de la semana 4. El examen final, si no lo han hecho, lo podemos hacer mañana juntos, así que no se preocupen por eso. Pero las tareas ya tienen que estar completas las 4, a más tardar mañana. Si tienen menos de 95 en alguna de las tareas, retómela para que les suba su punta, ¿de acuerdo? Les quedan dos días más para subir su attendance para hasta el 80%. La mayoría no ha llegado al 80%, así que todavía tenemos, pero la mayoría les faltaría un poquito. Así que tenemos dos clases más para recuperarnos. All right, so that's going to be it for tonight. I hope you have a great Tuesday tomorrow and I will see you at night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Teacher, I have a question. Yeah. Eh, recibí una encuesta, esa la vamos a eh, hacer el miércoles. El miércoles, ajá, no la vayan a hacer todavía porque esto es el miércoles y se tienen que hacer con todos acá en la clase. Uh -huh. Ok. Ok. Thank you for Good asking, night. Mayra. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.